restless bride This miracle was revealed over a long time span Sent from Allah to an angel then to a man That man was Muhammad, the best of creation Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa la'aqibatu lil-muttaqeen ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We praise you to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. Dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته, and welcome to a new episode of Correct Your Citation. With us today in the studio, our guest, Brother Abdullah Berira. All the way from France, uh, Brother Ahmed Bassouni from Egypt and Muhammad Shindi from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new episode of Correct Your Citation. <laughs> well, before we begin, I would like to refresh your memory and uh, ask you a few questions to remind ourselves as well as the viewers with what we studied in the last few episodes. So, may I ask uh, Abdullah with the definition of tajweed, which is the main subject of this program? Okay, so Tajweed in Arabic basically means improvement and uh, the scholars... Th that is the literal meaning. Yeah, the literal meaning. Mm. But the scholars, they mean by Tajweed pronouncing the letters from uh, their point of articulation and to give it its right and um, due uh, um characteristics. characteristics. Wonderful. So what is really the difference between the rights and the due characteristics or what we call it in Arabic haq wa mustahaq they mean by right that uh, its articulation point never changes exactly and they mean by due as well as other characteristics which are permanent yeah such permanent. as al-infitah al-istila al-itbaq etc which we will study inshallah in the future once we get to study the characteristics of all the Arabic alphabet inshallah. these are permanent characteristics yeah. and that's why we call it the haqq yeah. the due rights what about the due characteristics which are uh, not permanent actually they do change yeah. due to the order of uh, the letters yeah. sometimes as we get to study we'll see that the same letter might suffer once idgham merging once ikhfa hiding sometimes uh, it will be pronounced very clearly and sometimes the same letter will be pronounced with tafkhim very heavy and deep such as the ra with fatha for instance and sometimes the same letter will be pronounced with tarqiq very soft and thin uh, such as if we pronounce the ra with kasra and we we'll give uh, a couple of examples like when we say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim The Ra is Ra Then uh, if we pronounce the Ra with a vowel Kasra It becomes Ri Min Sharri Waswas Min Sharri So the Ra becomes very soft, very thin These are the due characteristics which are not permanent They change due to the order of uh, the letters Okay Muhammad we spoke about the importance of learning Tajweed and the importance of reciting the Qur'an properly in response to the divine command in the Qur'an where Allah the Almighty says tartila," which means recite the Qur'an in a measured tone and with a melodious voice. So we said there are mistakes and we uh, categorize the mistakes into two main categories or groups. One which is jelly, very obvious. Yes. And we said, this is a mistake which is haram to make. Yes. It's very wrong to make this mistake. And uh, we said, the obvious mistake would either change the structure of the word yes. or the meaning by changing the pronunciation of the word or one of its letters or altering one of the vowels on any of the letters yes. to that extent. Can you give us an example of uh, a mistake which is very obvious? Yes. Maybe uh, like changing the vowel of the letter, as uh, we may say, "Surat uh, uh, It may be wrong saying like "anam tu." Uh, it's not. Maybe it yeah. is actually definitely a great mistake. Yeah. And this is a very uh, important example. Imagine when you say "anam It is "Oh you Allah, the one who bestowed your favor." Yes. Because it is to the uh, second person. 
But when you say an'am to, you change the vowel on top of the ta into dhamma, it becomes the first person. I right. did. Yes. So you change the meaning totally. Uh, what about changing the letters? Some yeah. examples. Like saying kathalika uh, yatba'ullah. It can be a wrong thing as yatba'ullah. So yeah. basically that refers to the importance of learning the points of articulation of each yeah. letter. Because the ta and the ta are very near by. Yet they change the meaning totally. Yeah. If you change one of the letters to the second or to the other. Yatba means puts a C. Yeah. But yatba means to follow. To follow. Yeah. So changing the pronunciation of the letter, just the letter would change definitely uh, the meaning of the entire Word. But like Balin saying it, it Dalin something. Exactly. Like, yeah. Can you tell me the difference between a Balin and a Dalin? A Dalin who a person misleads. A uh, Dalin those who went astray. Yes. Have been misled. Yes. Okay. And a Dalin person who guided. Exactly. Yes. Imagine changing the Dal into Dal has actually changed the meaning into its opposite. Yes. yes. So that's why we call it. This is an obvious mistake. Lahnun Jale. And the scholars said, Al-Lahnul Jalai, or making an obvious mistake in the Qur'an, is haram. And there is a general consensus of the reciters of the Qur'an over this ruling. Muhammad, now it's your turn. Can you give us an example of a hidden uh, mistake in the recitation? A hidden mistake, uh, like, um, first, like, ruling the Ra, like, uh, in the Ar-Rahman, ruling the Ra. The unwanted repetition or yeah. ruling of the Ra. And uh, why is this a hidden mistake? It doesn't change the meaning yes. at all. And uh, it's not changing the letter. Rather, it is just mispronouncing the letter. It yes. is a mistake. But it would be only figured out by those who are skilled and professional in yes. the recitation of the Quran. Professional reciters. Those who are knowledgeable in uh, the science of Tajweed. Mm -hmm. uh, does it mean that uh, it's okay to do it? And uh, no problem with it? No. And that's why we're studying to avoid these even find mistakes because you are dealing with Allah's word so you want to recite it in the best way as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to recite it as Jibreel alayhi wasallam taught it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam can you give me another example like uh, pronouncing the dam the dhamma between the fatha and the dhamma when we come to learn about the vowels the dhamma the fatha and the kasra we learn how to pronounce each letter with the proper vowel but sometimes we mix up some people uh, mispronounce the Dhamma so it is pronounced in a level that's between the Dhamma and the Fatha yeah. they do not collect their lips the Dhamma is say Ooh. so it's pronounced in between or the Kasra or, yeah, can you give me an example the, the Kasra between the, the Kasra and the Fatha exactly can you give me an example um, in Surah Al-An'am there is yeah. a verse which says ma indi ma tasta'jiluna bih yeah. You notice the word bih. The ba has a kasra beneath it. So we must make sure it is pronounced as kasra. It's commonly mispronounced to be bih. Yeah. Yeah. If you notice, the kasra is with a smile bih. But when you mispronounce it, of course, undeliberately, you did not mean it. Unwanted mistake. So you say bih. And this is very common. And that's why we're studying the points of articulation as how to pronounce each letter properly so that we do not fall even into a hidden mistake. Okay. Now let's resume, if any of you uh, remember where we stopped at last time. Uh, we started last episode with learning the point of articulation of each letter of the Arabic alphabet. And uh, there was a mechanism, Abdullah if you remember, just to remind the viewers and ourselves what is the best way to figure out the articulation point of each letter? We said that there is a specific mechanism. Do you remember it? Yeah, I do. Um, is to put a Hamza with a Fatha above it, just before the letter, and then to pronounce the letter with a Sukun. Okay. This is one mechanism. And we said to put Hamza to Qatar, the Hamza which will be pronounced, or an Alif, to precede the letter which you want to know exactly its point of articulation. Then... It doesn't matter what kind of vowel on the Hamza or beneath it. So it could be Fatha, Dhamma, Kasra, it doesn't matter. But we said we will choose the Fatha because it's easier. So we'll say A ah, in addition to the letter, uh, which is wanted to know its point of articulation. We'll apply a Sukun on top of it or a Shadda. Shadda is a vowel that puts emphasis on the pronunciation of the letter. So we put a Sukun as for instance we will take the letter Kha. 
I guess we'll stop last time nearby. So we'll begin from there. The letter Kha, the mechanism is to precede this letter with a Hamza. And we put a Fatha on top. So it will be A. Then apply a Sukun. You see the Sukun on top of the letter. Then pronounce the two letters together. Say them together with the proper vowels which we chose. And once the voice stops, that is actually where this letter is originated from. This is the exact articulation point of the letter. This is very important and necessary to make sure that each letter is very distinct from uh, other letters. Especially the letters which we call them neighboring letters, nearby to the articulation point of each other. So for example, the Kha. What is the exact articulation point of the Kha? Here. We say Alif with Fatha, then Kha with Sukun, it will be Akh. Akh. So the articulation point is the closest part of the throat. Basically the throat is one of the articulation points of uh, the Arabic alphabet. And it has three articulation points for six letters. If you look at this diagram or this graphic, we notice that on the bottom which we call it Aqsal Halq, the farthest part of the throat because it's farther away from the mouth and the uvula. We have the hands and the ha. The hands and the ha. We already learned how to pronounce the alif. Remember? A. Yes. A. I want you to feel it. Just put your index finger where the voice stops. A. 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 Repeat it until you feel it. A. A. Okay. Nearby in the same area, the farthest part of the throat is the ha, the ha which is a letter that we will study as well. So we'll say, ah, ah, ah. Try it. Ah, ah, ah. ah. Do not prolong it, Abdullah, because we're going to learn about the med letters or the prolongation letters. But this letter will be, ah, 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 ah. Exactly. Okay. Right on top of them, the middle part of the throat, there are two letters. The Ain and the Ha. We studied the Ha in the last episode. Ah. Yes. Next to it is the Ain. We'll come to study it as well. But right now we're studying the Ha. The nearest part of the throat to the mouth. And we call it Adna al halq Adna because it is the closest part of the throat to the mouth. Aqsa means the further. Okay. So how would we pronounce the Ha? Watch this and watch the changes which take place in the throat and how your mouth and tongue would tend to pronounce the kha. Ah, ah, ah. So basically, there is no involvement whatsoever for the, the tongue in the pronunciation of any of these letters. That's why we call them huruf al halq or al halqiyya. This group of six letters, the Hams, the Ha, the Ain, the Ha, the Ghaim, and the Kha, with their levels, the Hams and the Ha, are the farthest part of the throat, Aqsa al the Ain and the Ha, the middle mm -hmm. part, the Ghaim and the Kha, the nearest, part. or Adna, the nearest part of the throat to the mouth. Look at the diagram once again. Okay. So watch the Kha again. Akh. Ach. 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 Exactly. Yes. One very important thing. The Kha is a letter which is described as letter of Tafkhim, a very heavy letter by nature. Okay. Sometimes when we come to pronounce the Hamza which precedes the Kha, we tend to make it heavy as well. Yes. While the Hamza or the Alif is always soft. So it is a mistake to say, Ah. No, that's wrong. The right is to say, remember what we said, to give each letter its rights and due characteristics. So you treat each letter as a person. You respect each letter. Yes. So you gotta say, Eh. Because the Hamza is from the Halq, the farthest part. Eh. 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 Ah. Then you come to the Kha, which is heavy, you say, Ah. Yes. 
أخ أخ okay okay one more time while we're watching the changes I would like you to pronounce it yes. okay? okay watch this أخ 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 very good I know actually this is the most difficult part of Tajweed to know how to pronounce the letters properly uh, to many of the viewers that might seem boring but guess what I deliberately chose this part to begin with because without it you will not be able to recite the Quran and many of those uh, Arab speaking uh, uh, people think that they know how to recite the Quran but unfortunately due to uh, some grave mistakes they make in the pronunciation of the letters and not pronouncing the proper letters from the proper articulation points we say you make a mistake and it is an obvious mistake that we should avoid uh, we get back to take the next letter before we take a break, which is the letter DAL. I would like you to pay close attention to the letter DAL because there will be another letter close by and normally people mix up between these two letters. Okay? The letter DAL, as we agreed, preceded with a Hamza, put a Fatha on top, it will be A. Then a Sukun on top of the letter DAL, it will be AD. 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 Now I would like you to guess before we read together and before I inform you about the exact articulation point of the dal. Where does the dal come from? Where does it originate from? Abdullah. Practice it, then I want you to describe it. Ad. 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 Mm -hmm. Is from um, just uh, behind the teeth. Okay. Does the tongue have anything to do with the pronunciation of the dal? Yeah, I definitely. Guess. Which part of the tongue? Uh, the tip of the, the tongue. The tip of the tongue. Okay. So the dal is pronounced from the top side of the tip of the tongue. Top side? You see, we're very, very specific and precise. Because not just the tip, the tip has a top and has a bottom. We're talking about the top part of the tip of the tongue. And what lies opposite to it of what? The gum line of the two front upper incisors. The two front teeth. Uh, the upper gum, the gum line, so when the tongue hits and strikes this part, the gum line of the two upper front incisors, that is exactly the articulation point of the dead. Why don't you practice it? Ad. 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 Muhammad? Ad. 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 One more time for the viewers. The dal is pronounced from the top side of the tip of the tongue and the gum line of the two front upper incisors. Well, let's take a short break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. We pause at the letter ذال. Please, I would like for all of you to bear patiently with me. Once we're done with this very important and essential part of learning Tajweed, you will find it very easy to learn how to recite the Quran properly and you will enjoy it as well. And you will figure out. Actually, I would like to suggest something uh, uh, to the viewers. That I would like for you to have your own personal recorder. And for instance, recite Surah Al-Fatiha right now on your own and record it. Then after we're finished with this course, I would like you to recite it once again and compare the two recordings. You'll figure out that there is a great difference between the earlier recitation and the one which you do after you have learned the exact articulation points of all the letters. So now with the letter ZAL. Put a Hamza before, add a Fatha to it, then a Sukun on top of the Dhal, then pronounce, and once the sound stops, that is the articulation point of the Dhal. Watch again. Adh, Adh, Adh. Would you repeat it? 
Ev. 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 Perfect. Now, Abdullah, describe it. Describe the uh, articulation point, the origin of this letter, according to the way we pronounce it. Uh, this time we put the tip of the tongue just underneath the incisive Ev. So basically, the letter there, we watched the graphic where the tongue is taken out of the mouth, yeah. right beneath the two top front incisors. So that's why we say the Zal is articulated from the tip of the tongue and the bottom edges of the two top front incisors. Az, az, az. By the way, the letter ذال along with two other letters, which are, let's go back, the ثاء yeah. and the ظاء. Remember, the three letters ثاء, ذال, ظاء. These three letters we call them الحروف اللثوية. Lithawiyah due to the origin of these letters because they come close to the elevated area right above the gum of uh, the top front incisors. So we call them huruf lithawiyah. It is commonly mispronounced. Some people will call it lithawiyah. Rather in Arabic it is called lithawiyah because we call the gum litha. Yes. So that's why it is proper to say Lithawiyah. There are three letters put in one group. Tha, Zal, Va. So make sure that you stick the tip of your tongue out right beneath the top front incisors when you say Ath or Az or Az. Of course, we will not when we come to learn the articulation point of the Va, the changes which take place on the tongue to make it distinct from the pronunciation of the Zal and the Tha. As well. But Sheikh, I want to ask a question about that. Is this a special uh, articulation point uh, for this letter from the tongue? Exactly. The tip of the tongue, this specific part, tip the tip of the, of the tongue, tongue. Yes. with the lower edge, with the edge, the lower edge of the top front incisors. This is the dal, and it is best to take a few examples to practice while the dal is in a word. Here. Uzkuru, 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 Uzkuru. This time the dal had a sukun, and with the dal has fatha, we will say kazab, 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 kazab. Azhabatum. أذهبتم أذهبتم So make sure that we do not confuse the ذال with the زاي That happens when you do not stick the tip of your tongue out of the teeth So say أز That becomes a totally different letter Which is common زاي But the ذال is very distinct ذال ثاء ضاء You make sure that you stick the tip of your tongue out Okay Go back and take the next letter, which is a very, very important letter. For many, this letter causes a big problem. But we will learn its articulation point to avoid any problem with this letter and to learn how to pronounce it properly. Okay. The letter Ra. I wonder, this letter for the English speakers is pronounced totally different from a totally different articulation point than the letter Ra in Arabic. So let's first learn its articulation point in Arabic. The letter Ra is articulated from the tip of the tongue. Ar. Ar. The tip of the tongue with the top of the tip and what lies opposite to it. From the gums of the two front top incisors. Again, ar, ar. I would like you to watch and notice 
the striking of the tip of the tongue to the gum that what really makes the difference from the English R to the Arabic Ra because normally the English R is pronounced far away from this articulation point due to the non-striking of the tip of the tongue to the gum it will be R R Robert but in Arabic, you got to make sure that the tip of the tongue would hit the gum yes. of the two top front incisors. Again, ar, ar, ar. And beware, do not roll up the ra. Do not repeat it. Because this is a hidden mistake as we stated. If you remember that was yeah. your example when we said that Ar the unwanted repetition or rolling of the Ra. So you say Ar, Ar Rahman. Actually you pronounce several Ra. It wasn't just one. It said Ar. Ar, Ar Rahman. Ar. Ar. By the way, this is a very difficult letter even for many of the Arab. But by practicing Allah and by seeking the help of Allah, we find everything easy and affordable. So once again, the makhraj or the origin of the ra. It's articulated from the tip of the tongue with what lies opposite to it of the gums of the two front top incisors. Ar, 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 without the repetition of the ra. By the way, uh, the ra, along with other two letters, which are the noon and the lam, will be grouped together and we will call them. Al-Hurufu al Because this is a very specific part of the tip of the tongue which is called al So due to sharing the same origin and sharing the same part of the tip of the tongue, these letters which are the Ra, the Noon, and the Lam will be grouped together and we call them Al-Hurufu al I'm emphasizing on that because some of the viewers would like to be professional in the recitation of the Qur'an. Would like to know what gathers certain groups of letters together. So remember, we talk one letter of al huruf al which come from a specific part of the tip of the tongue along with the gum of the upper top incisors, the Ra. You make sure that there is a slight striking or the tip of the tongue would hit the gum to be pronounced properly without rolling or the repetition of the Ra. Abdullah, would you please say it properly? Ar. Ar. That's an English Ra now. Where the tip of the tongue is far away yeah. from the gum. I would like you to hear, uh, to, to feel it. Yeah. Ar. 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 The tip of the tongue, not the middle of the tongue, yeah. not the sides of the tongue, just the tip the top tip of the uh, tongue striking or hitting slightly the gum. Ar. 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 Exactly. Muhammad? Ar. 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 Did you notice anything? Yeah. What did he just do? He just repeated it. Exactly. There is a repetition of the ra. Yes. He actually pronounced several ra's. We just want one ra. Ar. 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 Exactly, huh? Ahmed? Ar. 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 MashaAllah. Barakallahu fikum. Let's take a few examples. And remember, the Ra is a letter which we said when we studied the examples of Al Mustahaq that its pronunciation would differ according to the vowel. Not only the vowel on the Ra or beneath the Ra, but the vowel on the letter that precedes the Ra as well. Okay, we'll come to study the Ra by itself as a whole letter, as a whole kingdom would be treated as a person yes. and what changes would happen in the pronunciation of uh, the Ra of Tafkhim or Tarqir due to its order of uh, uh, in the world Now we feel that the Ra is coming from the proper origin Exactly Arsalna 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 Arwasi 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 Excellent, perfect We have to hurry 
we still have so many letters we're gonna finish and we'll try our best to finish them in this episode inshallah if not we'll continue with them, with them in the next episode the letter Zai and we warned beforehand of mixing up between the letter Zai and what? Zal and we said in the case of the letter Zal you take the tip of your tongue out right beneath the edges of the upper incisors but in the case of the Zai let's look at the proper way of pronouncing the Zai and its proper articulation point watch this as as your tongue never comes out of your mouth yes. as as um. and there is actually a whistling sound as 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 so the zai comes from the tip of the tongue and the palates of the two front top incisors at a point just above the two front lower incisors as 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 as, as. again as as as, as. As, as, as don't you notice that whistling sound? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's why the letter Zai and a couple of other letters, Sin and Sad, have the same characteristics, which is a Safir. When you pronounce them, you hear and you feel the sound of the whistling. So that's why we call them Al Huruful Asaliya, and they share this characteristic, which is whistling. Okay. Taking examples is a very important tool in learning how to pronounce the letters properly in the words. Azad, 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 Rizq, 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 Did you notice here the Ra is very soft and light yeah, because it has a Kasra, so say Ri, Ri. Versus Rahim. Yes. Yeah. Rizq. 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 I don't want you to forget. We're actually aiming at the Zai. Rizq. 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 Azza. 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 Excellent. Each time we have a slide, you notice that there is the word Al Kahf. Yes. And this is what we promised you and the viewers as well. Once we're done with the ahkam of al-makharij, and also start scratching the surface of the rulings of al-nun al-sakina and al-tanween, we'll start practicing and applying these rules on the beautiful surah of Surah Al-Kahf, which the Prophet sallallahu highly recommended for us to recite it on every Friday. Because for those who recite it on Friday, it uh, causes a light to shed from beneath them until the heaven. And this light will continue uh, to illuminate for them until next Friday. And they will receive a great forgiveness for whatever was done in between the two Fridays. Because of the significance of this surah, we chose to learn how to recite it properly and apply the rules and regulations which we study uh, on this surah. Short break and inshallah as a gel, we'll return in a couple of minutes. Don't go far away. We'll resume with the articulation point. Recite it every day and do read it loud Dear viewers, in the winter of our age, that is when we get older and that is when we need our most support, that is when we feel least secure and luckily for these gentlemen around me, they have someone to look after them in their old age they have some support and some love. Unluckily for most of their citizens who are old in the Gaza Strip and due to the daily Israeli closures and bombings, a lot of these elderly citizens don't have this luxury where they can get food, where they have a bed to sleep on. And this is what we will try and show you today, the hardships and the support that some of these people get. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, I just like to remind you in the beginning 
of this last segment of today's episode that this, this is a beautiful gathering that is surrounded with the angels and hopefully Allah is descending His tranquility and covering us with His mercy Amen. and also Amen. is uh, praising us in a gathering that is with Him due to studying His book so whether you are with us in the studio or at the convenience of home may Allah bless you all and may Allah help us to learn how to recite the book of Allah properly and of course understand it and act upon its meaning and rules and regulations Amen. now brothers and sisters let's resume we start at what letter? the letter the Zay. we already finished the letter Zay, yes. right? and we uh, made it very distinct and different from the letter the. The. Okay. we said the letter Zay and a couple of other letters share a very important characteristic which is the whistle mm. And we also call the three letters were put together in a group which is known as the letters which are known as al asaliya yeah. Asala is the top part of the tongue that's different than the dhalq. So these three letters share this origin. So that's why we call them al huruf al asaliya Let's study the letter seen and would remain for us another letter of this group of three letters. Uh, Sheikh, I want to know the, the meaning of the word Asal again. Asala to Lisan is the top, uh, the tip of the tongue. Yes. Muqaddima to Lisan or the tip of the tongue. Yes. Okay? Now, the letter C, as we agreed before, you put a sukun on the letter itself, preceded with a Hamza, has a Fatha, as this is a mechanism which we chose to recognize the exact articulation point of each letter of the Arabic alphabet. Now, I'm going to pronounce it while studying the diagram and what changes takes place in the mouth and the tongue. S S S S not S. This letter is completely different from the letter Th. That's why we have two letters. So in the case of the Th, stick out the tip of your tongue. But in the case of the seen, you keep it inside. The seen is articulated from the tip of the tongue in the palates of the two front top incisors. At a point just above the two front lower incisors. Yes. S, 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 S. S. Exactly. I also would like to request the viewers to practice along with me as well. Uh, did you notice the whistle while pronouncing the letter seen? Of course. S, S, S. And make sure there is a letter that is coming right away. Many people confuse these two letters together. The letter seen and the letter sad. So once again, before we go to the next letter, remember, the letter seen comes from the tip of the tongue and uh, the two uh, the, the, the palettes of the two front top incisors S S S let's take some examples the word is ta'u is ta'u of course you remember this word is in surah al-kahf is ta'u is ta'u Actually, because of the letter, Ta is there, and it is a heavy letter by nature, yes. a letter of Tafkhim, some of the reciters who are not educated enough would tend to mispronounce the letter seen, and instead they would pronounce it as Saad, because yes. it suits more the Ta, and that's why we're studying each letter in details to know how to pronounce it properly, regardless of the letter that follows it. So we say, Ista'u. Ista'u. It is a fatal mistake to say, Ista'u. Uh, ask yes, a question, by the way. Sure. If I say, Ista'u, with the sod, is it considered as an obvious mistake? That's definitely an obvious mistake. Uh, it doesn't have any meaning, yeah. the word Ista'u, that I know of. In addition to, you change the pronunciation of the scene into a sad. Yes. So why would we have two letters then? Yeah, why didn't we make them one? Isn't it confusing? Because as you noticed before, if I'm not an expert, uh, it's very confusing, for, especially for the foreigners. Exactly, and that's why we're here, to make you an expert. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it will be pronounced as 
سين نت صاد استطاعوا استطاعوا لونج ود ويسل اف يو ريمبر سم تايمز اي سو ذا ليتر اوف سين اور صاد اون ذا سيم ليتر اون ذا مصحف او ان ذا قران اوكي ذاتس ا توتالي ديفرنت ايشو بور وي ليرن in some words in the Quran due to reciting with a specific dialect the sad will be deliberately pronounced as seen in, uh, for example when we say musaytar we will recite it as musaytar and that has its conditions which inshallah we will study it when we come there we still have a long way to go I wish we can have everything in one episode but of course that's impossible so let's take it easy and bear with us patiently The word mustamsikun mustamsikun and there are two scenes in this word mustamsikun mustamsikun wastami' 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 of course we don't have any problem whatsoever with pronouncing the scene properly because it's followed by a letter that's already muraqqaq So it will not be confused with the sad. It will be easier to say it as yeah. seen. Mustamsikun. Yeah. Mustamsikun. Okay. Back to the menu where we take the next letter, the sheen. Quickly, put a sukun preceded mm. with a hamza and a fatha, and it will be ash. Ash. Muhammad. What do you notice the most as far as changes that take place either in the mouth or in the tongue? Look at the diagram once again, pay close attention and describe it. What happens? Ash, 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 ash. Okay. We, we don't, we don't uh, say the sheen, but the top of the, top of the, top of the tongue. We, we use the, the middle part of the tongue. Exactly. So there is a very noticeable elevation in the middle part of the tongue. Watch this once again. Here, the middle top of the tongue. Once you pronounce the sheen and you stop at it, once the sound uh, is seized, that is the articulation point. So the changes took place in the middle of the tongue, in its elevation. Ash, Ash, Abdullah. Ash, 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 ash. Okay, so the sheen is articulated from the middle of the tongue, and what lies opposite to it from the upper palate or the roof of the mouth. Ash, ash, ash. The letter sheen, along with other two letters, were put in a group and were given the title. The letters which are known as al huruf al-shajriyah. The word shajr is actually referring to the middle of the mouth. The middle of the mouth. It's commonly mispronounced. Some of even the Arab would say shajriyah. And there is a big difference between both of them. When there is a sukun on the letter jim, that's shajriyah means from the middle of the mouth. While shajriyah is referring to a tree. Tree. Yes. Okay. Sheen and, and, and Sheen. The Sheen. Yes. The Jim and the Ya, which is not a Mad Ya. Yes. There are three letters which we studied some of them and we'll get to study the rest are different. We consider the Mad letters which we'll study them separately. They all come from the indefinite empty space in the mouth and the throat. These letters are known as the med letters. We'll study them separately. Yes. The ya is one of them. So the alif, the waw, and the ya, which are put together in a word, why? Waw, alif, and ya. The waw and the alif and the ya. When they don't have any vowel, we call them, they have sukun. Then each letter will be preceded by its corresponding vowel. For instance, the waw, whenever it's preceded by a dhamma, like nu. So we will tend to prolong the wow yes. into two motions. One, two. Say, no. That's different than the wow which has a vowel. Or the wow which has a sukun and it's not preceded by a dhamma. So now, the alif, whenever it is sakina and it's preceded by its corresponding vowel which is the fatha. Yeah. Such as ha. 
there is an alif sakina preceded by a vowel that is fatha regardless what letter that precedes the alif we're focusing on the vowel itself so that's a madda letter then there is the uh, the uh, we talked about the ya and we spoke about wow wow the wow and the alif so we put them together in one word which will have mm-hmm. a special diagram to describe them in details uh, in one word that is mm-hmm. back to our subject the sheen and the jeen mm-hmm. and the ya which is not a maddiya are put together in a group and this group is called shajriya simply because of this because they come from the middle of the tongue so if I go ahead of these letters and try to pronounce them the sheen, the jeem and the ya, we already studied the jeem and we said adj Muhammad you special, I would like you to pronounce the jeem once again adj not adj, yeah. there is no game in Arabic, it is adj adj, adj. it seems like it comes from the middle of the mouth adj adj and the sheen ash ash you know it's the elevation in the middle of the tongue to hit the upper palate the roof of the mouth ash ash and of course the letter ya which is the last letter we'll get to study but uh, quickly ay 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 the three letters are put together in one group which is called shajriya shajriya shaj remember shajriya uh, I don't really know if we have enough time to continue with the rest of the letters, but uh, we're not wasting a single minute. By the praise of Allah, Alhamdulillah, Shukrullah, we're doing the best thing ever. We're trying to learn how to recite the word of Allah properly, so that we acquire the first step in the fantastic hadith, the sound hadith of Uthman ibn Affan, which he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in it, Khayrukum مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ Which means the best of all of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and this is the first step then teaches it to others. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make amongst those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ And to be continued next episode I leave you في أمان الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman.